I think our commitment was Jack 18, you know, and it's like November, December. So really what we need is capacity in place. They just said, hey, it can't come to your place anymore. We do one day a month, we're going all over, and we're so overly committed. So capacity would be good, so if you stood $20,000 new spay and neuter, one question would be, what would be the capacity, you know, to be able to do that? Maybe dog, cat, deep, both help, and have that to be worked out. Okay, so um, just going through quickly, I think I got my, our email on the issues raised, and um, Jason and Josh were nice enough to get, uh, get the phone and explain them to me, so hopefully I got them right. The first thing, the prefabricated building is not what the commissioners intended for or wanted to use grant money for. And so I want to make clear, this is not the little dark, the dark animal shelter building, nothing to do with that. That's always been planned to be like a block of metal. That's for the animal kennels, so you need to hose it down to what it wants. Stick built for that kind of situation at all. You know, it would have to be block or metal, something that would be, you know. So, none of the conversation that, in our limited budget, we put $400,000 into your 250 to, um, so we, we admit, we were thinking about a Clayton, um, and we were serious about it, but with nothing, we're still open to other options, so with Danny um, Alvis and Joe Parrott, who's really helped out a lot recently. So, it wasn't a done deal. We never put a penny down, and we never, um, yeah, we never signed a contract or anything whatsoever, so we were considering it seriously, but not to the point where we, we did anything. But really, the truthful, based upon all the commissioner's comments, we're backing down from that. We're trying to work with Joe Moore and Danny Moore for alternatives. If we can't build full 18, 1900 square foot animal shelter we want, maybe we can afford to build, build half of it now and get carpenters and people to help us out. So we're really trying to backtrack on the um, on the uh, Clayton building. That would have been a permanent structure, by the way. That's one reason why we're leaning toward it. Had good materials and stuff. Anyway, enough commissioner outcry willing to back off on that for large street. Um, so that was one major, major um, item. Some of the commissioners, in particular, are really upset by it. Which uh, so, you know, we tried to um, kind of turn with that and, and backtrack and be respectful. This, and the donations uh, report that our donations, especially I guess, using matching funds, were inflated. But we did not use any of our items to go there. It was just strictly all liquid money. So nothing, um, nothing whatsoever. It shouldn't have played that this actual donation were David to show you and the checks and fundraising. So no, no money, you know, pretty hard to say, no money was inflated. I think Eric talking to David might be able to concur on that. I think you heard me say about financial irregularities. We think it should come down to evidence because maybe things are perceived differently, but we feel pretty strong with our standards. We, we have, um, no board, we have the, you know, of course, the majority to vote to approve things. It's not the board, we also have the executive committee and in between board meetings, the executive committee get together to um, commit things, and David does a great, conscientious job of um, reporting them. How do you miss something? You can talk about another minute. You got another minute, okay. But a lot of you got this by like, email, but social media, I do want to spend a little bit as well. Um, I think from within, we've done a good job over the years. Our, our, at our workplace, on the phone. We get a lot of our customers, we try to be really good. Um, and so we asked our staff to be professional, asked our board to be professional. The last year, I heard from four or five commissioners how, how upset and bad it was for them to um, have our uh, advocates be as not as friendly as they should have been. So we talked about it, and we're going to ask our um, advocates to be respectful. Now, we can't guarantee things. You can't guarantee your own staff as board members, but you know, we can't guarantee the public, but we can definitely put a tone, like a Facebook post. We said, "Please be civil." We saw a lot of those posts from our Facebook posts. A lot of them said, "You know, please get a sample letter." So you know, they, they worked on it to be civil. So that be something that we're willing to uh, commit to. Instability on the board. Um, we have five board members with four plus years of service. And our current board, with the staff, got along great. And we all work 20 hours on average. We're going to 20 hours a week to provide financial fundraising assistance, repairs, and medical help, and so forth. And we do have a um, code of uh, conduct and ethics everybody had to sign, in that we also have the Tennessee nonprofits guidelines. We try to set good guidelines. And my whole life, I've always tried to use the word respect. And I think if we can still try to respect whenever what we do with each other. Um, that would go a long way. So we might not like some decisions, but we should deep down try to show respect and think we're doing what is best. It's a summary and requirements. Um, 
So yes, I want to apologize for a year or two ago when people got like pit bulls were unleashed on them. And it was then ending in a really bad negative. Uh, I think it did not come from our staff or employees. And we'll try to set a tone where people do it respectful as much as we can. Um, yeah, so please not redirect our 30,000 annual stipend at critical time. Also, our donation could be impacted and for negative publicity. The public is really, really behind this, we think. They really want their tax dollars and all their efforts to go into keeping this going. We use the $30,000, our donations come down. We have to scale back our second building, scale back the, uh, the increase in the uh, uh, animals coming new and rare animals. So the whole thing about to reevaluate and be careful. We want to be sustainable. But bottom line is, whatever we do, we want to do what's best for the animals. So we're not going to short cheap animals at a point. But um, we, we want to be sustainable. When things go down with our income, our expenses go up. We have to act accordingly. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, does anybody have any questions for Phil this time? Okay, thank you. Thank you. process of turning it around and have done so and personally I appreciate that we talked long about that and yes when you and I were talking so you know and I personally don't have any problem with us getting to 30,000 without the stipulations. Okay I appreciate that thank you very much and I guess we'll show up the next Monday meeting. That's it. All right so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you Jeff. Bye. All right, well, that takes. Oh, uh, another correction. Did I say Danny? Rob Lawson. Rob Lawson, okay. Rob Lawson. Although Danny Alves has been a pretty <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a Danny Alves. <laughs> that's right. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that was a mistake. Sorry. I know you know well. <laughs> so, I want to go
Not a plan wage, but that's just a suggestion. We can, we can you know, do the 10,000 operating. You can leave it at that. They can get a payroll that you can do. At that point, I would. Yeah, I think that the conversation or what we were looking at as a committee when this conversation really came up was that we were trying to look at something about getting ahead of the problem. Yeah. You know, so we're, it has nothing at, at the really, you know, there's a lot that are said in regards of defending things here and there, but I'm like, I, I took the conversation away as being, we were looking at trying to get ahead of the problem, and to get ahead of the problem, the animal counts only, you know, two ways to do that, you can put them down, or you can stay in there for it. Animals tomorrow, and we were looking at trying to make sure that thirty thousand dollars were used more towards preventative versus maintenance. Uh, you know, because as they're going to increase the facility size, their liability. You know, uh, an animal is a liability at that end of the day. It's, like it's a liability. It's a mouth to feed. Their liability is going to go up by however many bed spaces they increase that. So that's that's only going to make the problem bigger for us in regards to the maintenance or all everything like that. It's not preventative, so we were looking at it from a preventative, not anything malicious towards the humane society way, but just say, what are we doing to get ahead of the problem? You know, because we can't keep adding on the space while it's in on the buildings. But at that point, you know, if we're if we're going to support with thirty thousand dollars, whether that be to feed them, to spay them, to do them, to payroll, I would, I would say we just thirty thousand dollars and call it done. Well, I think the issue with the thirty thousand dollars for paying digger was. Snippet, all these organizations that are providing the low cost pay and they are so backed up. So, I'm uh, sorry, I mean, just the $30,000 for them to use it. Yeah, it's the other way, just $30,000. $30,000. Not saying that it's not any other, because there was stipulations on the cousin money of them having to match up. I guess with both Professor Barker, you know, you're on board, you start on borderline seven presidents for them, you know, I don't think anybody else has. I don't, I don't like the way that, just the appearance of that. Uh, so if, we're gonna, you know, if that's what we're going to do with it, I, I would be a just give a full amount back to them for them to use at their discretion and then we'll reevaluate how they reevaluate next year. That's and that's the way it's listed in this document. Basically, it's $30,000 for the same. So, yeah, um, I know that that conversation was about, and I know there was a motion in the second that was passed, it was restricted. I do remember that. So. Um, we will still have to undo that, even if it's written in this appropriations the way that it's done. I feel like we still need to fix that amendment if that's what the commission wants to do. But I would like to say, though, I, uh, I jumped the gun a little bit and told them that we weren't going to do anything today that we were going to do at a full commission meeting. And I, I would prefer to keep my work on that and just leave it as it is and allow them to come back to the full commission meeting so they have a chance. Because I, I do think it'd be fair, it's unfair to them for us making decisions after I told them we want to call it. Uh, is that okay with the community? 